Secretary Maharaj's permissions and pranam to him, I welcome all of you in today's session of the Vivekananda Science Circle. And uh, you, you know the topic and uh, about the speaker also quite a bit through the poster, but I will just say a few words anyway. The speaker, uh, the speaker is uh, Professor Chiranton Chatterjee, and uh, he got his uh, bachelor's degree from IIT Roorkee. Then he got his uh, postgraduate degree from uh, the Joka IIM, and then he went to the USA, I guess, and then got his. Uh, master's and PhD there also from Carnegie Mellon. This is a good university in the USA. So he, he then, uh, you know, he's working there now. You are working in the USA itself. UK. UK, sorry, I'm sorry, yes, UK. In the University of Sussex. And uh, so he's a reader now. And um, uh, he also at the same time He's a visiting fellow at the prestigious Hoover Institutions of Stanford University. It's a very well-known place. And he's also a visiting faculty in economics at IIM Ahmedabad. And uh, his topic, as you know already, the science, economics, and morality of antibiotic resistance. And this kind of unusual topic, but still, this will be, it will be of interest here because antibiotic resistance, you know, there are a lot of things could be said now. And we take like a Murimichri, we take antibiotic these days. It's a very, very rotten things to do for their own health. But that's going on here all the time. And all is the strongest medicines I give antibiotic, the doctor prescribes, though there is a doctor here. His father is a doctor. And, uh, but uh, still, you know, uh, he hopefully will be talking some of those things and we look forward to listening to his talk. And thank you. And then just on behalf, on behalf of the institute, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Namaskar Maharajji, and thank you to everyone who has made their way to the talk today. Uh, I know that this Vivekananda Science Circle talk uh, is, has a long history. I mean, it is about the motivation to promote scientific temper in society. And yes, uh, Dr. Lairi is absolutely right. The talk is a little unusual, but at the same time, it tells you how the idea of scientific temper is not a static issue. What is science today? Good science today could become bad science tomorrow. And that is the point which I want to highlight with the antibiotics case study. But there are several other things which we can get into in the health context where you can see that good science over time has become problematic science. And we need to be careful about how to balance our tastes and preferences for these kind of products that are coming out from the science. Um, the idea uh, that I will uh, share today comes with a lot of secondary research and some primary research with my co-authors at IIM Ahmedabad and in the US. Uh, in fact, I was a faculty member at IIM Ahmedabad uh, for about between 20, 2018 to 2021. Last summer, we moved to University of Sussex. And uh, this is an idea which is uh, we are ignoring right now in the middle of COVID pandemic and our random popping of azithromycin pills. But it, there's a hidden pandemic that is lurking in the background. And this affects us all. You could be seeing that when you are consuming azithromycin or uh, amoxicillin clavulanic acid prescribed by the doctor or over the counter given by the pharmacist, sometimes uh, the infections don't go away completely. So the antibiotics are getting weaker over time. And this is essentially the outcome of this resistance issue. And behind this resistance issue is this trinity, if I can call it that, of how science changed the face of how pharma pharmaceuticals and modern bio biopharmaceutical innovation uh, 
offered, in, uh, offered a solution to death and diseases in the early 1920s and during the World War, World, World War II phenomen, uh, era. But then over time, the economic issues started complicating the incentives for uh, innovation, the incentives for access to antibiotics. And then recently, there is also a discussion around the morality of how much antibiotics should be consumed by society. And I'll get a chance to uh, touch on the, all of these three aspects of this trinity. I will try to intersperse my talk between English and Bengali uh, here and there. And uh, if there is a question, uh, please do stop. Uh, please do feel free to stop me. And uh, do have a hard stop at 7 p.m. But let's try to uh, keep it efficient. I don't have too many slides. I want to finish early and then take your questions. Okay. With that, let me get into the first slide that I have, <coughs> which is the idea of discovery of antibiotics. I, this slide might not be completely visible, but uh, what I want to show to you is that about 102 years back, uh, there was this effort from Alexander Fleming on the penicillin discovery efforts that was happening. And today we stand in 2022. And between these 100 years, we have seen different generations of antibiotics, broad spectrum, narrow spectrum, within broad spectrum, potent antibiotics, et cetera, coming in. Some of this research is coming from public research. Some of this research is coming from big pharma research, big companies investing R&D dollars in antibiotics innovation. But at the same time, over the last 1990 to 2010 period, you see that companies are suddenly not doing enough innovation in getting next generation antibiotics. And the reason for that is purely economic, but is also driven by scientific considerations. The economic aspect of this is when they are realizing that their products are becoming less and less potent, they are feeling less motivated to have these antibiotics in the market or invest in R&D in these antibiotics. And at the other end, when you see the bacterial outbreaks like we are seeing with uh, what we are seeing right now, uh, every second day there seems to be a newspaper story of a new zoonotic disease coming out. Sometimes it's the tomato flu these days, other times it's the monkey flu, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and this is going to continue over the next 10, 20 years as more intermingling happens between human beings and uh, animals and uh, this deforestation happens around the world with climate change, temperatures change the advent of zoonotic diseases is going to continue. And in that world, if you keep randomly popping azithromycins of the world, we are running into a cataclysmic danger, as I see it, which is uh, the issue of antibiotic resistance. Whatever little arsenal that was there with medicine to resist, let's say, bacterial outbreaks will also go away. And if farms, if companies are not investing in innovation, then public sector will have to step in. Governments will have to step in and do something here. And I'll come to those issues um, shortly. So that's the uh, realm. That's the 100 years of science coming up, science going and solving uh, diseases and uh, re resulting in human welfare. But in the second half of the hun last 100 years, we see that the amount of technological change that's happening with antibiotics is decreasing over time. Now. Uh, this overconsumption of antibiotics has caused the problem that we are discussing today. And I'll show you some country level statistics. Again, the picture may not be very clear, but let me try to help you out with the laser pointer here. So on the x-axis, what we have is different regions and the burden of antibiotic mo molecular resist uh, antimicrobial resistance. It's a Lancet, Lancet study from 2019. And on the y-axis, we are seeing deaths that they can count as best as they can cause because of antibiotics resistance, because the antibiotics are not working in patients. Okay, And these are uh, counted in rate per 100,000 population. Now, you can see that the green and the light green and the dark green areas are essentially coming out from uh, regions in South Asia, in Southeast Asia, and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Antibiotics resistance is less prevalent in other developed economies, more deeper uh, public health challenge in uh, these regions, including obviously India. So that basically tells you that beyond public policy, beyond science, beyond economists, crying about doing something in solving this problem, there needs to be a civil society conversation around the role of science, which helped us all 100 years back, but today might be problematic, and we need to balance our consumption around it. 
here is a picture, again, this is coming from a PNAS article, Proceedings for National Academy of Sciences article. These are, uh, these are different types of antibiotics. Some of these antibiotics are actually prescribed by doctors around us. Uh, more problematic bacterial uh, issues are being held, uh, are being addressed with advanced antibiotics called the, uh, the, the carbapenems. And I see, show you in the blue plot, let me take the laser pointer again. In the blue, pot, blue plot and the red plot, the meropenem and imipenem numbers. On the y-axis, we have the measurement of percentage of isolates when they're teasing out from the body, the isolates, which are resistant to the meropenem antibiotic, which are resistant to the imipenem antibiotic, etc., etc. And they're plotting how that has evolved over time from 1999 to 2008, which is in the x-axis. And we can see that it's also happening with these advanced antibiotics. And in fact, in 2010, there was a superbug scare in India, which was called the NDM1 superbug. And that caused, that is still a matter of concern because that superbug then spread, spread to more than 70 countries around the world. And I have a paper on that and I'll show you in a, in a short while. That is causing these most potent antibiotics, the carbapenems, more and more uh, resistant. I mean, they are, uh, the, the bacteria has found ways to work around these carbapenems. So if you don't have innovation from science or from industry or from public research, uh, on new antibiotics, and at the same time, the most advanced form of antibiotics is getting uh, more and more uh, weaker over time because of this resistance issue. It's a grave problem for humanity. And with COVID-19, what we have seen, and I'll show you an uh, interesting study here, we know that physicians around us have prescribed wantonly, in some sense, an azithromycin pill. Take the azithromycin with dolo and you should be okay with the fever that comes with COVID, right? Or uh, amoxicillin uh, glavulinate acid. So basically some safe type of antibiotics are also being given along with the paracetamols during the last uh, two years of the pandemic. And that has caused India, it was already a big issue in the 2010, post 2010 period once the superbug was discovered in Delhi, but it has caused India to be a big hub for rising antimicrobial resistance. And today the ICMR is also uh, saying that this is going to be moving into a new phase of high antibiotic my, my, my antimicrobial resistance issue in Indian public health unless we do something about it. Uh, I was telling to you about the doctors swapping out these pills. So there's a study, you may not be able to see this, but basically they are saying that, especially in less developed economies, in lower, lower middle, uh, low and middle income countries, the standard treatment regimen for COVID-19 in the last two years has been a bunch of antibiotics, starting with an azithromycin or cefurexim or uh, amoxicillin clavulanate, or a bunch of them, seven, eight, seven or eight names. And Along with that, some fever reducing paracetamol, okay? So they are studying here how this has the potential to result in all these antibiotics becoming more and more resistant, uh, redundant over time in re removing the infections. And that I think is a matter that we should now pay attention to um, as the pandemic somewhat recedes uh, into the background and other issues start crop up around public health. Now, why is this happening? Uh, and and if, even if you stay away from the COVID-19 issue, why is this happening? Uh, some of us who have children at home who are young parents, we know that when the kids have some fever, we go and meet the doctor. After a couple, Our resistance issue, our ability to stay through the fever uh, episode without an antibiotic is decreasing over time. Parents want the fever to be resolved as soon as we can. They are pushing the doctor for antibiotic pills. If the doctor is not giving it, uh, they can have a relationship with the local pharmacist to get the antibiotics at home, etc., etc. So there is some parental pressure that is happening here. The second issue that Anecdotally, if we talk to our relatives and friends, etc., we know is that people start with antibiotic regimens, but they don't comply with the entire regimen. If you're supposed to take two pills a day for five days, and the fever goes away in three days, uh, it's very usual. I mean, our, your own relative in the household will say that I'm not needed to take the entire five-day regimen, right? So that is another big issue in terms of compliance that is causing this. 
and then I say broadly health system issues. This is outside of health system also there are reasons like when you are having all kinds of foods that are pumped with antibiotics that are indirectly entering our body that is definitely there but beyond within the health system context also there are issues. So for example today there is a general move of having um, uh, medicine, me medical provisioning provided in both private as well as public hospitals by less than uh, formally trained doctors, right? Registered medical practitioners, uh, or if we want to be blunt about it, by quack doctors. And many times you see that these uh, people are actually giving you access to such antibiotics uh, without care whether that could cause in unanticipated consequences. And now it is also being formalized by governmental regulation, Ayush and other things are happening. So you can see that such uh, medicine service, I mean while at one end it's solving somewhat the issue of healthcare inequality because not of us, all of us have access to doctors, especially in remote locations in the country. But at the same time there is not enough awareness and education happening with the these RMPs, informally trained doctors, that should that could actually ration the way they are using antibiotics. Uh, there, is a, there was a study done with the Liver Foundation in the West Bengal, Kolkata area by uh, Abhijit Banerjee and others, who showed that the uh, semi-formally trained doctors perform as much as a formally trained doctor in low-hanging con disease condition issues. But if things become grave, where you need to get into an antibiotic prescribing uh, environment, you need to consult the formally trained doctors. That's the finding that came out. It came out in science some, some years back. But who is actually listening to that result? People are interpreting that result as saying that, okay, maybe the registered medical practitioners are the way to go, and the semi-formally trained doctors are the way to go. And that has a health system structural friction issue that directly is relevant to what I'm trying to argue today, that how do we ration our consumption of antibiotics? So there was a study done uh, in, um, this was done in actually in Oxfordshire, where parents were brought into a focus group and they were asked that, uh, are you aware of the issue of antibiotic resistance? Are you concerned about it? If you are concerned about it, what are your steps towards mitigating it, et cetera, et cetera. One of the key findings of this was these are privileged parents. Somewhat there was a sample selection issue. They were privileged parents and they felt that, well, we are aware of it and we don't need to worry about it because through other measures we are able to mitigate the issue of resistance. Now if the sample changes to let's say our locality uh, parents and we do a focus group here, will the results change? Etc. Etc. Things, uh, questions like that come to your mind when you think about how overconsumption on the demand side can actually uh, spike antibiotic consumption without rationing uh, its consumption because of this potential danger for um, antibiotic resistance. A last part that I would like to highlight why AMR is so high, especially in an Indian context or South Asian context, like I was showing you earlier, is historical issues, right? So. Um, now it is more difficult to get an antibiotic from a pharmacist without a prescription. There are these Schedule 8 drugs. This has changed in the last 10 odd years. But when I was growing up, or uh, even when I was in college, uh, it was not that difficult. You could actually get over-the-counter pills over time uh, for antibiotics, right? And the other thing that I was going to say was this paper that I have with my co-authors. Uh, which is this on the New Delhi, um, uh, the New Delhi superbug, right? What we see in this study, I'm not going to show you all the data and the statistics behind this study, but what I want to tell you is the basic story of this study. So in 2010, the, it was discovered that there is this superbug which is making the carbapenem group of antibiotics redundant in India. Moment that happened, uh, multinational companies in India started withholding their antibiotic sales in India. When they started withholding their antibiotic sales in India, domestic companies, the big names, the usual suspect names, started pushing out their generic or branded generic versions of the products in the market. And also the doctors, it seemed, started buying into writing prescriptions of the locally available antibiotics, the, the generic or the branded generic version. The doctor should have been playing a stewardship role, saying that, hey, we should not be prescribing the local version of the antibiotics because there's a resistance issue here and it can actually aggravate resistance. But the doctor did not seem to play, play that kind of a stewardship role in the data that we are uh, analyzing in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in this particular context. And this increased more and more after 2010 and 2011, okay? 
and we also see in the data that uh, this particular bug then spreads to 70 plus countries and uh, in fact it's found in remote locations like in arctic in uh, tuscany a little village in italy uh, they found this bug has spread there was a there are obviously tourists who are visiting the country who are carrying a car natural carriers of this bug etc etc and who are spreading this particular disease now what has happened as a result is incentives to do new carbapenem research or and even an advanced generation of research or science beyond carbapenem for a GlaxoSmithKline or for a Sanofi, which are in this particular space for antibiotics R&D, has decreased. They started thinking that, OK, if in India, everybody is randomly consuming these antibiotics, the generic versions of it, why do I even invest in this particular area? Right? Because my products will anyways become redundant over time because of this generic consumption of 1.3 billion people. Now realize this, till now I'm talking about the science part of it and the economics part of it, but there is a tricky ethics issue. Somebody may ask you that in a world in rural Bihar or rural West Bengal, if there is an antibacterial outbreak or something like that, and the only solution is a generic or a branded generic version of carbapenem, am I going to think about the ethics of giving carbapenem because India is a hotbed of AMR and stop my primary healthcare center doctor from not prescribing the carbapenems even if it is available through government channels? So there is a tricky trade-off here where at one end you have to constantly think about the uh, healthcare access issue in contexts like India, but the other, other end you also have to think about how to ration the consumption of such products in the market. Right, and and as I said, this this is causing global disincentives. Uh, all these multinational companies are going away uh, from investing in antibiotics research. Uh, uh, in 2011, the Obama administration, recognizing this issue, brought a new act, the Gain Act, as they called it. Uh, this is an accelerated way through which they were trying to incentivize antibiotics innovation. Very similar to the uh, to the uh, mechanisms they had for getting the COVID vaccines out, uh, but not much enough uh, big results coming out from the R&D efforts, whether of public companies or of private companies. In fact, funnily enough, what is coming out is research from Indian public research and Indian entrepreneurs. So there's a company called Bugworks in Bangalore, which has a product now in the market, and it's working with a global uh, public health unit to trial out its products. And it's supposed to be a very promising new candidate for antibiotics coming from their uh, research. Obviously, this company does not have the deep pockets. Uh, they will not have the channels through which it will be able to spread its product tomorrow to the nook and corner of the world. So that's where they will potentially be acquired by a big company, etc., etc. Those kind of things will happen, the business part of the story. But at least the science is happening with the entrepreneurs. The, 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 the entrepreneur is actually a scientist entrepreneur. He has a, he has a uh, biology PhD, and he's now trying to do the research with NCBS, National Center for Biological Sciences Researchers. But that's what it seems to be is the status on how to bring about innovation in the antibiotics context. In economics, we call this issue also a externality issue, right? So. Um, uh, if you think about grass on the ground, there's a very, ni very nice lawn outside uh, uh, this premises. But this is gated, right? So the cows outside are not able to come in and graze that. But suppose this is op made open to all, right? It becomes a commons, it becomes a public good for everybody to graze. And soon the well-maintained lawn might be damaged, right? So this is what is the issue of commons you uh, uh, that we generally talk in uh, a public goods context in economics. And this is an issue we uh, talk with examples from fishing, for example. Overfishing is an issue, so we need to ration fishing, etc., etc. In the same sense, this particular issue of antibiotic consumption is almost like a commons issue. And uh, whereas vaccines need to be, you need to be incentivized to go and consume vaccines, because the antibiotics have be, has become a bad today, you probably need to think of it like pollution. If pollution is a problematic issue for the people who are living out, uh, around the industrial plant, the standard prescription is, okay, let's tax that plant for the pollution that it's causing. Uh, 
So there is some research now coming out saying that maybe we should tax antibiotic consumption if the rich world or a certain context has to indeed prescribe carbapenem, let them go ahead and pay a higher price for it. Whatever is the standard market price, let's apply some tax for consuming that antibiotics. Okay, so that's a very blunt economic type of thinking through which you are trying to solve this externality issue. But as I told you, there is an ethical issue, right? So. Uh, this is the this is a, a paper in bioethics which talks about taxing antibiotics and rationing consumption just like treating it as a commons or a pollution kind of a wise good a bad that causes problems in the society but the end of the abstract the author also highlights that it might cause health healthcare inequality if you tax antibiotics pricing uh, then many people who need the antibiotics may not get the access to the antibiotics and then there would be a big public health uh, debate on that issue the big this trade off is not just not just that economics economists uh, recognize it uh, philosophers also recognize it okay so this is a issue that happened uh, I mean, it keeps happening in healthcare in many, many contexts. Uh, when the oxygen crisis happened uh, last summer, uh, uh, there was this conversation on where should these oxygen cylinders go, right? Some, uh, who, how do you think about rationing the distribution of oxygen cylinders to the more needy versus the less needy patients? And there was this conversation of how many people, how many patients are going to be sacrificed in the process as a result. Now, Michael Sandel in Harvard has talked about this issue in the context of what he calls as a trolley problem. Okay, the trolley problem is as follows: it's a it's a non-health, non-science thing, but it comes back to you when you are talking about the scientific temper and the fact that scientific temper is not static. The, what is good today could become bad tomorrow, and in that case, you have to ma face this pesky morality issues with the trolley problem. So, I'm going to show you this picture. I wish there was a video, but uh, we can show this through this picture. So here's a trolley coming, and the trolley is on the li railway line, and there are five people, uh, there's a fork on that railway line. There are five people who are working on the one part of the railway line, and there's a diversion, one person who is working on the uh, di uh, this diversion that is there on the railway line. And uh, you as an agent with uh, power to divert the train, stand at the fork of this railway line, and you can pull the lever. You can divert the trolley towards the, uh, the this windy line and, and say that, okay, uh, maybe you can sacrifice this one person and not kill all the five people, okay? That's the trade-off you're facing, okay? Now, Philosophers have talked about how to change this trolley problem with different contexts. So for example, they say that, well, it depends on the power of the trolley. The trolley can be, uh, I mean, the power of the lever. The lever can be so strong that it can stop the trolley altogether at the fork. Why does it need to sacrifice both the five plus one people? Others have said that, well, uh, can we merge the role of this person outside with the driver inside this trolley, et cetera, et cetera. So there are different thought experiments that have happened. Point that I'm trying to make is that if you are going to ration antibiotics, some people will be sacrificed and some other people will be uh, benefiting from that antibiotics. So if you're going to tax antibiotics, maybe the rich will survive through the issue of resistance being mitigated. But the poor may not have even the basic amount of antibiotics that could be required because of the taxation issue, and there could be spillover in that taxation issue, and more people could actually end up suffering from lack of antibiotics when they require the antibiotics. So in that sense, the this is the a morality part of the antibiotics resistance disease. Uh, there, there are not fine, there are no uh, one answers to how you ration consumption. And, and, and when you are thinking about today, different types of science touching our lives, uh, going back to the original conversation of scientific temper, I think we need to think about science in that sense also. Science is going through a very interesting journey of trolley problem. When you are thinking of having autonomous vehicles on the road, right? It also has the same on antibiotics issue of sacrificing a few versus sacrificing more. Uh, when you're thinking about having digital mental health apps on your phone or digital health apps on your phone, there are issues there as well in terms of ethical trade-off society will have to make. Uh, today it might seem, wow, we can talk to the doctor on a video call, but tomorrow there could be other unanticip unanticipated consequences like I was talking with uh, Dr. Lairi just before this thing. So this is the ethics and mor morality story that I wanted to sensitize you with. 
yes 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 of course i can yes chesta korchi joto ta parchi so trolley problem ta hocche je ट्रलि एक ट्रलि आस रेल लाइने एबार एक भद्रलोक दाड़ी आई फर्कटा सन्धिक्षणटा जो और पावर आज है जो ट्रलिटा के आईदार वाइंड लाइन टार दिखे नहीं जाए यह लाइनटार दिखे नहीं जाए एक जन ही मात्र मानुष मर एज अ रेजल्ट किंबा सोजा बड़िए जाए लिभार दिए घोरबे ना और पाँच जन मानुष जरा क्ज कर सोजा लाइनटा ता मारा जाते परे ठीक है एब कोश्चन हे भद्रलोक जिन दाड़ी आखने इन्हीं की लिभार टनबें और ट्रलिटा के दिखे घूरिए देवें ना ट्रलिटा सोजा जाए रईट यश्न ट्रलिटा के धरे नीन सायन्स हिसेबे ठीक है अनेक समय मन करी आ सायस सायन्स इनोवेशन दिखे सायन्स एंटीबायोटिक्स दिखे सायन्स अटोनोमास वेहिकल्स दिखे सायन्स आपना के ओपिएड्स दिखे एक विशाल इश्यू अमेरिका आजकल हे ओपिएड्स पैंडेमिक सबाई ओपिएड खे जा सबाई डिप्रेशने भुगे और एख सबाई जेगे उठे से जे पार्डि फार्मासिटिकल्स के पानिश करा उचित कारण वाला प्रचंड बेसि ओपिएड्स खाई दिए पूरे अमेरिका के ठीक है पॉइंट हे भूले जाए एक डायनिक्स आज आज जो भलो कल से बजे होते से ट्रलिर वो लिभार टाना खूब मुश्किल हो जाते टनते गए तो पाँच जन के सैक्रिफाइस कराते होते कि डिसिशन्स कन्टेक्सट एंटीबायोटिक्सर कन्टेक्सटे जो हे धरून जी बी एम पूरा अन्टीबायोटिक्स का टैक्स कर दी ए दाम बाड़िए दी अन्टीबायोटिक्सर तेल अनलि जरा जर का पकेटे पैसा आज ता अन्टीबायोटिक्सा नहीं एगोबे और जैसे सत्यिकार दरकार डाक्त हाँ सत्यिकार कार्बो पेन आपनर दरकार सो खान ठीक है ता पा कि जरा पा जैसे सत्यिकार दरकार छो धरून गवर्नमेंट चैनल दिए डाक्टर डाक्त वो कार्बोपेनम गरीब दे दी तो तरा जो पा तर चिंता क्या रखे सो से ही फिलोजफी और एथिक्स आस ट्रलि मानुषा रोलट कथा हवा उचित से कि ट्रलि ड्राइवर निजे होते ये थकते क्या डिसाइड करते दिल पब्लिक पलिसी मेकार गवर्नमेंट बलो तुम एखे गए दाड़ी पड़ो ये लिभार जेटा से शक्तिशाली लिभार है तुम पूरा जिस थाम आज तो बला जाते अन्टीबायोटिक्स विषय पूरा बैन कर देव कारण आप प्रचुर अन्टीबायोटिक खेल गत दो बचरे सो ए नेक्स्ट दो बचर हमें अन्टीबायोटिक्स मोरेटोरियम रखब कारण रेजिस्टेंस हो जाए कनते गे सामाजिक डिसकाशन है से खूब ही मैं कन्ट्रोवार्शियल होते इन देंस दैट पब्लिक हेल्थर जो अनेक रकम प्रब्लेम्स इश्यू रेज हो जाते बोझाते मोटामुटी भावे एथिकल ट्रेड अफ टा क्या बेसिक एंटीबायोटिक्स ब्रड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक्स डर नईन्स डाक्त डायरेक्टली मत हे क्षेत्र मेंवयड करते हैं फार्स अफ अल एंटीबायोटिक्स जो पारा जाए आप निजे अनेक सवधानी जीवन एक्सैक्टलिम वोटाते ही आसमाम जो अल्टारनेटिव मेडिसिन फर्मे चले होते और जीवन जत्राटा अनेक भाव चेन्ज हो जाते जैसे अपन एक्सपोजार टू वैक्टेरियल आउटब्रेक कमे जो पे जमन जल थ वैक्टेरिया आसे से दिखे नजर रखते होते मैं स्टैंडार्ड कि लाइफस्टाइल चेन्जेस करते होते अपना के रिक्वयरमेंट टू हाव अगमेंट इन द फार्स प्लेस चान्सेस कमिए दे एंड सेकेंडलि खूब जो कि भगवान करूँ ना होक बाट जदि तो मैक्रोफेज मैं कि एडभांस सैंटिफिक टेक्निक्स आज दिए जरा एंटीबायोटिक रेजिसटेंट तर अल्टारनेटिव वेज दिए ट्रिटमेंट करा है एखे हमें देखते पासी कि मैं मैं बायोलजी डिपार्टमेंटे लोक जन आने मन हे जरा बोलते पर विषय क्योंकि अभी एज एन इकोनमिस्ट एट बोलते अगमेंटिन रेजिसटेंट हम अपना जीवन जत्रा एक एफेक्ट होते चले कितु उपाय आज अपना चिंता करार कि नहीं सरम भाव आई थिंक
ব্যাপারটা যে হয় সেই জন্যই আমার এখানে আসা বলতো বলবার হচ্ছে না কারণ সবাই তো প্রফিট ওরিয়েন্টেড না কোম্পানি হ্যাঁ বল দিয়ে দেওয়া হচ্ছে এখানে আরেকটা জিনিস বলতে চাই আমি সেটা হচ্ছে যে একটা ওয়েবসাইট আছে দেখতে পারেন আপনারা পেশেন্টস লাইক মি ওকে যেটা পেশেন্ট সাপোর্ট গ্রুপস তৈরি করেছে আজকাল তো সবাই আমরা একটু গুগলে দেখে নিই নিজেরাই নিজেদের ডাক্তারি করে নিই তো সেখানে একটা ফর্মাল সিস্টেম আছে যেখানে ধরুন আপনার অ্যান্টিবায়োটিক রেজিস্টেন্স আছে আপনি দেখতে পারবেন যে একই যাত্রায় দু হাজার আরও লোক রয়েছে তারা নানান ধরনের ডিসকাশন করছে যে জানো তো এরকম হচ্ছে ওরকম হচ্ছে আমি কি আমাকে এটা প্রেসক্রাইব করা হচ্ছে দাঁতের জন্য আমাকে করা উচিত কি বলা উচিত ডাক্তারকে যে দেওয়া দিও না বা ডেফার্টভাবে দিও এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা পেশেন্টস লাইক মি হচ্ছে এনএইচএসের একটা ওয়েবসাইট ওরা নিজেদের বলে যে ফেসবুক ফর হেলথ কেয়ার সেটার একটা বিশাল রোল রয়েছে ইনফরমেশান জেনারেশান অ্যান্ড এডুকেশানে র্যান্ডাম গুগল সার্চে হবে কি হবে না আই ডোন্ট নো বাট ওয়েন ইউ হ্যাভ এ কিউরেটেড এক্সপার্ট মিডিয়েটেড পেশেন্ট সাপোর্ট গ্রুপস আই থিঙ্ক ইট রিয়েলি হেল্পস আমি একটা সিঙ্গাপুর বেসড ওয়েবসাইট দ্যাট মিমিক্স পেশেন্টস লাইক মি তাদের সঙ্গে কাজ করি যেটার নাম হচ্ছে পেশেন্টস এনগেজ চালায় একজন ভদ্রমহিলা এবং তার হাজব্যান্ড দুজনেই জোকার অ্যালুমনাস তারাও এক্স্যাক্টলি সেম জিনিসটা করছে যে সাপোর্ট গ্রুপস আছে মেন্টাল হেলথের আছে ক্যান্সারের আছে অ্যান্টিবায়োটিক রেজিস্টেন্সের আছে নানান ধরনের ডিজিজ কন্ডিশানসে যেটা নিয়ে আমরা জর্জরিত হচ্ছি এবং আমাদের কাছে ইনফরমেশানটা পুরোপুরি নেই এই যে চারজন এজেন্টের কথা বললেন তারা আমার দিকে মানে মানে অবশ করে রেখেছে বেসিক্যালি কোনো কল নিতে ইন ইন দিস কনভারসেশন পেশেন্টস এনগেজ হেল্পস ইউ উইথ ডক্টর মিডিয়েটেড আইডিয়াস যে কীভাবে পেশেন্টস পেশেন্ট একটা এজেন্সি পেতে পারে ডাক্তাররা যদি থাকেন বাবা যদি তুমি কিছু বলতে চাই বিষয়ে বলতে পারো অগমেন্টিন রেজিস্টেন্সের ব্যাপারটা কিভাবে হ্যান্ডেল করা যেতে পারে হ্যাঁ মানে সেরকম সেরকম অ্যাডভান্সড ল্যাব থাকলে ডেফিনেটলি আইসোলেট বের করে নিয়ে সেখান থেকে বের করা যেতে পারে কিন্তু আমাদের কাছে অ্যাডভান্স ল্যাবের কটা আছে বলুন মানে আশেপাশে কলকাতাতে হয়তো একটা বা দুটো হাতে এরকম ল্যাব আছে সে এখন যদি যেতে হয় চেন্নাইতে গিয়ে টেস্ট করে রেজাল্ট আসবে ততদিন কি ধৈর্য ধরতে পারবো আমরা যে জানতে যে হ্যাঁ রেজিস্ট্যান্ট কি রেজিস্ট্যান্ট না দিয়ে দাও চলবে তখন দেখা যাবে এই তো আমাদের না আপনি যখন অগমেন্টিন রেজিস্ট্যান্স ইটস হাইলি লাইকলি ইউ আর রেজিস্ট্যান্ট টু আ ব্রড স্পেকট্রাম অফ ড্রাগস কারণ যারা অগমেন্টিনের আশেপাশে অনেকগুলো ড্রাগস আছে সেগুলো হয়তো লাইকলি আপনি সেগুলোর প্রতিও রেজিস্ট্যান্ট তার মানে আপনি আপনাকে ভাবতে হবে না আমি ডাক্তার নিয়ে কিছু বলতে চাই না এই বিষয়ে বাট এটা নিয়ে কিন্তু এক্সাক্টলি কিছু বলবে তুমি জমানোর জন্য
आज भलो कल बजे हो गा टेने धरा खूब मुश्किल हो पड़े और द्वित हे महाराजी बोलें जो उन्नी जानते ही ना जो उन्नी रेजिस्टेंट उन छात्र रईट येनरल कन्भार्सेशन समाज मध्य सचेतनताटाई नहीं अन्टीबायोटिक रेजिस्टेंट होते अन्टीबायोटिकर प्रति रेजिस्टेंट कलचार करा जो पे हमें विषय कार संगे कथा बोल से जो कि मैं टेम्पोरारिलि सल्व करा जाए भिडियो यूट्यूब ट्यूब एटसेट्रा से शुने जो क्यों कि उद्देश्य विषय बार अच्छा अभी शेष करी तरह बाकी मैं दोटो स्लैड आज बस सो हमार धारणा ओके आई शिफ्ट बैक टू इंग्लिश लिटिल बेट सो हमार मत एंटीमाइक्रोबियल रेजिस्टेंस शुड बी ट्रिटेड एज अ वन हेल्थ इश्यू जस्ट लाइक कोविड नहीं हमें उव हाव लार्न दैट ओ इट्स अ डिजिज अफ दि पोर वर्ल्ड एज वेल एज द रिच वर्ल्ड एंटीमायोटिक रेजिस्टेंस सीमिलारलि इज अ वन हेल्थ इश्यू एम जो से इफ यू रेकगनइज दैट दें देर उड बी अ लट अफ कोअर्डिनेशन हैपनींग पोटेंशियल विटुईन द रिच एंड द पोअर इकोनमिज मनीटरिंग अफ एंटीबायोटिक रेजिस्टेंस इज फार मोर एडभांस लेट से इन एन यूरोपियन और यूके कन्टेक्स दैन से इन द इंडियन कन्टेक्स एंड देर कूड बी नलेज ट्रांसफार दैट कैन हैपन हियर एज वेल I think there's an important role of uh, IEC activities, information education, communication activities, like the ones that we are having today uh, in this particular talk. So we have to take this conversation to the grassroots level with parents, with society, and raise this issue with doctors or MRs or whoever is trying to pressurize you into con overconsumption of antibiotics. We have to incentivize public innovation efforts. Like uh, Shomaji said, that there is no new antibiotics coming. We saw the discovery void in the last 20 years. So in that case, who will invest in the R&D dollars? Will it just be a startup in Bangalore or Boston or somewhere else, or will it be public research, public money, which can be invested into uh, new antibiotics innovation? And then lastly. Um, Uh, I would say that there is a very important role of stewardship of uh, the health system providers. Doctors, when they are getting themselves trained in medical colleges, they need to have a critical curriculum, perhaps changes around antibiotics resistance, so that we can catch them early and tell them that don't be rampant prescribers of uh, antibiotics because it's a very big issue uh, in a South Asian or a Sub-Saharan African context. Uh, and this is not going away. Uh, as I told you in the beginning itself, uh, in this era of the Anthropocene, we'll have more and more disease outbreaks. We'll have more and more requirements for and some sort of a medicine consumption, and the more likelihood of irrational uh, push of antibiotics happening, like I mentioned, that has happened in the COVID-19 time. So. I feel like, and many people are talking about the Center for Disease Dynamics and Economic Policy tracks antibiotic resistance. CDDEP. Uh, if you look up their website, you can see they they are constantly telling about a hidden pandemic happening post COVID with this consumption of all kinds of antibiotics that we have done, and not just in an Indian context, in many other institutionally fragile contexts. And it's important to recognize that this is not going away. This is a hidden pandemic, and we need to. Um, step up uh, societally to address them. So those are my few uh, thoughts, and then we can now open up for conversation, uh, questions, and conversation. Sorry, zoonotic disease. Zoonotic disease is uh, diseases which jump from uh, animals to uh, human beings. Some more de careful definition by scientists in the room. Uh, most welcome, uh, like zoologists in the room. Yes, one by one, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Gentleman Mast, yeah. Over consumption. How do you measure overconsumption, right? Exactly. 
that's what you're asking. So uh, in general, you would have, if you had a strong public health system, you would have year-on-year -year measure, even by regions, of um, infectious disease outbreaks. So whenever there is an infectious disease outbreak, let's say a million people are suffering in India every year, and you have the trend line of how many million such people are suffering in the last 10 years. Infectious diseases generally stay, you can make an assumption that for 7 to 25 days. And if you are doing a 7 to 25 days uh, mechanism, you are supposed to probably consuming one uh, dosage, one, uh, one um, what do they call it, one, uh, one uh, prescription, like five days, two pills of augmenting, let's say. Uh, so if you then multiply that 1 million for 7 days with 5 uh, days for 2 pills a day, you have a, a capacity of how much should be ideally consumed by society. And then you reconcile that number with, let's say, industry provided numbers of how much uh, uh, society is consuming on antibiotics. The difference would be the overconsumption. So you have industry statistics that the total sales of antibiotics happening in the market is so many million. That should have happened through some back of the envelope calculation is maybe one third of that amount. And so the two third amount is potentially overconsumption. There is no other direct way to measure it. You can do some studies. You can take small samples and anecdotally ask, are you overconsuming or are you underconsuming antibiotics and make some guesswork. So that's correlate. the benchmark. So in more institutionally strong country settings, yes. if you are taking the antibiotics 10 times a year, whereas in US you are taking it one times a year, you're obviously consuming it like 10 times more than what is being mandated by the public health system in the US. And so the second part that's the, the gold standard. Okay, the second part of the question is that there must be other factors which would lead to antibiotic resistance. How about the genetic make makeup of the people? Like the Swamiji, Swamiji is, uh, if I understand, understood him correctly, that he's resistant to augmenting, right? So when did it start? After how many times or how many cycles of augmenting use did he develop that particular resistance yeah. against anti so augmenting? And is there a study that a hundred augmenting uh, or thousand augmenting using people? how many of them actually develop resistance versus how many did not? There must be, I don't, I'm not aware of it, yeah, but yes, these, curious days, to know. these days a lot of people are ta doing this genetic antecedents to different types of health economics considerations. So I know of studies which show that certain areas of US are lactose resistant and others are not. And that has long run implications for economic growth. So those things are there, uh, but uh, I can't remember offhand as a paper that studies this, but there must be some something here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think there was. Yeah. Uh, my question is uh, more on a macro level. Um, so connecting to your uh, talk, one of the recent developments in the research of uh, medical sciences is uh, genomics. What mm -hmm. he was, I mean, mentioning genetics, and it's the research that is going on uh, most in developed countries is on uh, genomics and uh, one of the or possibly the most uh, I mean uh, advanced uh, country on this study is China more than US so there th the the target is to identify the genes and possibly uh, by doing a gene editing or something to address the um, uh, critical diseases like cancer and others if can be treated. But going forward, it might happen that this study will help uh, developing immunity in the first place so that the use of antibiotic becomes reduced. Uh, more immune uh, childs awesome. are developed. And uh, I mean, uh, so and uh, so forth. Now, my question is how you see this study uh, or this approach, whether it is a superior approach or not, number one. And number two is why India is very, I mean, adverse or rather very ignorant about this kind of study, which is very uh, I don't think state. India is ignorant. Uh, there are entrepreneurial efforts. No, but Map My very, Genome is a company out of Hyderabad. It's very limited. I mean, I mean, why I'm take, uh, telling, sorry, I'll interrupt. Why I'm telling ignorant is because if you see last two, three years pre-COVID, there was a there was a summit, world summit on genomics, uh, whether gene editing should be actually allowed or not. That was the main discussion. Yes. India was 
I, I mean, consciously not participating in that. Because you know the unanticipated consequence of gene editing, right? So you can create Frankensteins also in the labs. So that's why there was this debate. In general, to coming to your question, I think, yes, maybe we will have gene editing based techniques to solve this issue of antibiotic resistance. But by the time we'll have it, uh, we'll not be able to solve Swamiji's antibiotic resistance. So, which is an uh, immediate problem staring us at uh, today, right? So we have to solve it through, let's say, uh, stewardship, through societal conversations, through balancing or acting with patient support groups, asking for or resisting uh, irrational prescribing efforts. Once gene editing is establishing itself as a science and technology, regulatory allowed, pricing makes it accessible to not just the rich but also the poor, 30 years down the line, maybe that will solve the issue. But by then, most of us in this crowd will actually um, suffer the consequences of whatever resistance will uh, result in, in our human body. So the immediate solution potentially to me is a social issue, just like climate change is. Once tomorrow we will have artificial rain, we can solve today's high, I mean, China is having one of the worst drought, drought right now, uh, and they're so trying to solve it through artificial rains. Very good, uh, you can have a technocratic way to, to solve this, but today you have you can do some more lower hanging things and societally raise awareness about dumping plastic and all other behavioral changes that can solve the issue much before such advanced science helps you in solving the problem today. The other point is that scientific temper issue, right? Today the science that was good once has become bad and you're trying to solve that bad science with another wave of science which might become bad tomorrow without full information on how that science is going to behave going forward. So I would be very cautious about that. I would rather change human behavior and uh, that would potentially be my way forward as a prescription. This is my personal taste. I might vary from your taste. Yeah. Uh, sir, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, just like uh, antibiotic is a microbicidal, there are other agents like mycocidal, which are based for the fungal infections. So these are also broad spectrum mycocidals and just like the antibiotics are micro, uh, broad spectrum. So there are many overlapping zones mm. where these two might mingle together. So when one person is having antimicrobial resistance, he might be suffering from the case of mycocidal cases. So that is one question of mine. And apart from that, but for a particular strain of a micro, uh, microorganism in a domain like India or the subcontinent, wherever else in the other subcontinents, the strain might be acting upon in a different way. So is the antibiotic which is having an antimicrobial resistance over this part of the region of the world might be the case for the same elsewhere? This is why I'm saying we have to treat AMR as a one health issue. It's not just a problem of India. It's a problem for global health. Maybe for different strains, maybe for different uh, antifungal preparations, like you said, but there has to be a global conversation. Today we are talking about temperature and climate change as a one big issue for the entire world. But it may be too late before we start talking about antimicrobial resistance as a problem for the entire world, as a public bad for the entire world. We cannot just solve the problem thinking, okay, if we solve the problem for India, it will solve the problem for the world. Because there are spillovers, like you just said. There are always human contact and transmission happening, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to think about this as a one health problem, is my humble uh, representation. So we don't think about the river zoonosis or the anthropogenesis as well. Absolutely. These are the other methodal, uh, ways of phenomena of transferring the disease. You're taking me uh, from my comfort zone, which is economics. So exactly. So you'll have to forgive me for that. But yeah, I agree with you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, yeah. प्रोटीन पाउडर लो डोज एंटीबायोटिक देने समय फर दियर सेल्फ लाइफ सकले ही आज के दिन ना पैक्ड खबर टाइम झटकर खबर टाइम खेते चाहिए ओषुधे चे जिन मध्य अनेक बस क्या कर जो हमारे एंटीबायोटिक रेजिस्टेंस तैरी है से आज के दिन गरु थे दूध खाई ना हमें पैकेटेड खाई कब रेखे कि भाव खाई क्यों बोलें ना वो गोरुटा नियार पर और आज के पैकेट दूध आसपार मध्यखने वो दूधा क्या भाव रखा होता क्यों केटे गलो ना दो दिन 
সুতরাং আমরা না প্রোন টু এই যে অ্যান্টিবায়োটিক বা অ্যান্টি ব্যাকটেরিয়াল যে ড্রাগসগুলোর সঙ্গে এটা আমরা ফুড লেভেল থেকেই পাচ্ছি আজকে আমাদের চালে আজকাল পোকা হয় না এটা জাস্ট ভাববেন না যে কোনো কিছু ময়দা বা অমুক তুমুক মিশিয়ে দিয়ে আপনি যেটা বলছেন একদম সত্যি এবং আমার এইটার কারণে ওষুধের চেয়েও না ইন্ডিয়ায় ফুডের যে আমাদের আমি এটা নিয়ে একটু একসময় একটু নাড়াচাড়া করেছিলাম বলে বলছি যে আমরা কন্টিনিউয়াসলি না আমার কোনো পোটেন্সিয়াল খাবারটার পোটেন্সিয়ালিটি আছে এটা বুঝতে গিয়ে আমাকে একটু লো ডোজ ওখানে একটা অ্যান্টি ব্যাকটেরিয়াল কিছু দেয়া হচ্ছে তো আমার মতে এখানে আমি একটা অন্টারপ্রনারশিপ অপরচুনিটি স্মেল করতে পারছি যে যদি কেউ একটা ডিভাইস নিয়ে আসতে পারতো যেটা বাড়িতে থাকতো তাহলে আপনি যখনই কিছু দুধ বা খাবার বা যা একটু একটু টেস্ট করে দেখতে পারতেন যেটা অ্যান্টিবায়োটিক্স এক্সপোজ কি না কারণ দ্য আদার পার্ট অফ দিস ইজ রেগুলেটার দ্য রেগুলেটার ইজ অলসো নট ফলোইং রুলস ইন সেইং দ্যাট ওকে দিস মে কন্টেন অ্যান্টিবায়োটিক্স লাইক আমেরিকায় যখন আপনি কিছু জিনিস খাবার দাবার খান বলে যে দিস ওয়াজ মেড ইন আ প্ল্যান ফেসিলিটি উইচ ওয়াজ এক্সপোজ টু নাটস অ্যান্ড অ্যালার্জেন ওই ওই যে একটা লেবেলটা থাকে এখানে কে কি করছে তার তো কোনো ভরসা নেই সো সেই ক্ষেত্রে এজেন্সিটা যদি মানুষের হাতে দিয়ে দেওয়া যায় উইথ এ স্মল লিটল ডিভাইস একটা ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং সলিউশন তাহলে কিন্তু আমার মনে হয় এটা কিছুটা সম্ভব সলিউশন করবে দৌড়াতে হবে ম্যাগি কাণ্ড তো অনেক কিছু হলো like the food that we are consuming right now it is very true that they are containing some preservatives we all know that right and in the level it is written preservatives uh, up to a permitted level and edible food color edible oil how far this edible thing and how far this level of uh, permitted yes permitted what is, is the permitted and how far it is doing good or bad we don't know we are mere consumers সেই জন্যই উই আর ডুইং দিস আই উড সে দ্য টক টু রেজ দ্য অ্যাওয়ারনেস দ্যাট উই নিড টু নো হোয়াট ইজ দ্য পারমিটেড লেভেল ইজ দিস গোয়িং থ্রু সাম রিভিশনস ওভার টাইম অন হোয়াট বেসিস ইজ দিস রিভিশন হ্যাপনিং অফ হোয়াট ইজ পারমিটেড আর ইউ ফলোইং সাম স্টাডিজ আর আর ইউ জাস্ট র্যান্ডামলি পিকিং আপ সাম বিউরোক্র্যাটিক উইম অফ হোয়াট ইজ আ পারমিটেড লেভেল আনলেস দ্যাট ডিমান্ড কামস ফ্রম পিপল আই ডোন্ট থিঙ্ক এনি গভর্নমেন্ট অর এনি সোসাইটি উইল চেঞ্জ উই উইল জাস্ট বি ভেরি লেজ এফেয়ার ইন দ্য ওয়ে উই কনজিউম সাচ প্রোডাক্টস that is when they realize that this food habit is i mean um, is against our um, good health or whatever it's that reactive rather is, than proactive absolutely but that is based on their suffering that they realized what we are doing we are knowingly doing it it is right. not that we are realizing and uh, trying to then change ourselves we are not ch- changing because we are knowingly actually consuming anybody who is consuming giving his son chocolate chips and everything they know this is not good but that they still they are giving like madam was telling uh, every second day even before the uh, before the temperature is there i am putting antibiotic in my child's mouth i know that it might have an adverse e- effect but then i want the i mean uh, recovery very fast because tomorrow he has to go to school exactly so so that is a uh, i mean so you cannot stop this just by creating awareness I but maybe we can discuss well i don't know whether we cannot stop this we have to try yeah. we have to come and do a science talk on this issue and not just do some like abstruse talk on oh here is this next paper on antibiotic resistance which is not intelligible to the general mass right so the fact that we are able to pull this all out and having this conversation is i think a uh, optimistic step forward for me so shall we wrap up i think we have to wrap up by 7 pm also just not like okay i I'm, i'm i'm available i think the hall has to close and people have to leave good evening sir uh, good evening sir aapne uh, je website ne mention kar len like uh, patient interactions among themselves patients like me yeah uh, our patients engage engaged সো এবার ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে কি এরকম একটা ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট পেশেন্টের কোনো ওয়েবসাইট যখন তৈরি হবে লাইক এভরি পেশেন্ট ইজ আউট দেয়ার সার্চিং ফ্রম ইন্টারনেট ওনলি রিগার্ডিং অল দিস রিসোর্সেস 
and uh, they will not understand what a research is in depth into it unless and unless so the intermediary expert so there should be a, like a doctor association should also be involved in that patient so that yes. they can guide them as well in the right way ekdom eta ekta mane general hard bazar noy jekhane amra giye shobai nijeder health er byapare kotha bolchi kyo bolbar nei je thik bolchi bhul bolchi obantor kotha barta bolchi ki na bolchi etc e je dutu website e you will see patient support groups have first of all they curate the content second they have experts in that domain area jara bolbe je acha ei bishoye jodi kotha bolte chan tahole it will go through the uh, the editing of that doctor or the scientist who is a specialist in that area and they will transparently uh, share that with the patient support groups if you don't do this it will become another uh, like ki bolbo oi hard bazar jeta ami bolchilam ar ki তাহলে আমরা আই গেস গান্ধীজির মতবাদের দিকে যাই উনি একদমই ড্রাগস ফার্মাসিউটিক্যালস পছন্দ করতেন না সো আমরা মানে সেরকমভাবে যদি সাত্বিকভাবে বাঁচতে পারি আমি তো বাঁচতে পারবো না কারণ আমি ভীষণভাবে মানে ভাইস ড্রিভেন হয়ে গেছি এখন চল্লিশ বছর বয়সে বাট সেটা করতে হবে আর কি সামাজিকভাবে হ্যাঁ বলুন একটু শুনে একটু শুনে নি ওনার কথাটা হ্যাঁ বলুন হ্যাঁ আপনি আপনি দুই নম্বর হচ্ছে বলছিলেন একদম আপনি যদি নোটিস করে দেখেন যে গত দু দশকে আমি মোটামুটি এই এরিয়ায় কাজ করছি আমার পিএইচডি শুরুর টাইম থেকে যেটা ধরুন দু আর সেই সময় থেকে আমি লক্ষ্য করছি যে একটা সামাজিক চেঞ্জ হচ্ছে যেখানে হেলথ কেয়ার সেক্টরের এগেনস্টেই বলুন এগেনস্ট হয়তো শব্দটা ঠিক হবে না বাট সবাইকে পুশব্যাক করছে যে তোমরা কি সোশ্যালি রেসপন্সিবল বিহেভ করছো যখন এই ধরনের প্রোডাক্ট আসছো বা এই ধরনের স্ট্র্যাটেজি নিচ্ছ যে সিক্রেটলি স্টেরয়েড অ্যাড করে দিচ্ছ বা পরিষ্কার করে বলছো না যে প্রোডাক্টটা কি সাইড এফেক্টস হতে পারে এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা আজ আমার মনে হয় পোস্ট প্যান্ডেমিক এবং পোস্ট বলবো না এখনও চলছে বাট দ্য পয়েন্ট ইজ দ্যাট উইথ দিস পিগ হেলথ কেয়ার আমরা যেটা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে অ্যারাউন্ড দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড ইউএসএ তে রিসেন্টলি হয়েছে ইনফ্লেশন ইনফ্লেশন রিডাকশ রিডাকশান অ্যাক্ট যেটা আপনার প্রাইসের ইনসুলিনের দাম পঁয়ত্রিশ ডলার করে দিচ্ছে এবং সেটা নিয়ে প্রচুর মানে লবিং করেছে আপনার বড় বড় ফার্মাসিউটিক্যাল অ্যান্ড হেলথ কেয়ার কোম্পানি যে করবেন না করবেন না দাম যেন থাকে আমরা যেন মনোপলি হতে পারি এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা কিন্তু সোসাইটি আজকাল চাইছে যে হেলথ কেয়ার মোর দ্যান এনি আদার সেক্টর যেন তাদের রেসপন্সিবিলিটি ডেলিভার করে অ্যাজ এ ইন ইন টার্মস অফ দেয়ার এক্সিস্টেন্স সব সিইওজরা কিন্তু আপনি যদি দেখেন হেলথ কেয়ার কোম্পানিতে করছে না এবং সেই দিক থেকে একটা ডিমান্ড আসছে আমি তো বলবো আমি যখন ধরুন আঠেরো কুড়ি বছর বয়স ছিল তার থেকে এখন পরিস্থিতি বেটার 
but I agree with you completely. The prosthetic role ta, the ta public policy me policy me kare role ta is super critical. Bung shekha nee ye dollar six fifty nee je naacha naachi hotche na je hajar kuti da ka deva hoye je doctor der etc etc micro labs ke reputation problem etc. Amar one we need to have our CDSCO in India which shows evidence. I mean, ICMR is really important. Covid has shown my last two years. Jab jodi ekun data abong science shamne ni aste baato, abong publicly publicly transparent korte baato jinista. Tale legitimacy trust ta baato procession er upor. Kita to hoche na right. So in that case, who solves that issue? I guess citizens. Citizens ke hath hathe ni ta abe problem ta public health is care context hai and dabi korte abe through patients like me or patients engage. Jee ami enam abe ni je behavior koro ba ei particular information ta chahiye wo doctor ke kaste ke hospital ke kaste ke MR ke kaste ke. There is no other way for us otherwise. Mane amader khayi je ta abe hoy bamisha ke fertilizer eta kano hoy mene nu. Amar bache jonno ami kano mene nu beta right. So eta hoyche amar bokto bo. Choto bol. Just a question, small. Everything eventually boils down to money making. These days, economics is shuru kore That this is multinationals will not go for oh, making. Oh. Multinationals will not go for uh, making newer antibiotics because the market will not be that great because it will be copied or whatever it is actually. So that's the reason that they are not making uh, doing any research for that. Same, same thing, same psychology of money making applies to the, all the animal feed. Absolutely. That beef or whatever, chicken or something That's like that. That's where the they role of the regulator food, comes in. Deliberately they put antibiotics these days. So we're getting exposed, whether we take antibiotic or not, we're getting exposed to some of this antibiotic from our, from our food, regular food, fertilizers, or whatever, that, uh, whatever you put it in. All those things are adding. It's such a complex society. Everybody is trying to make money. So if they try to make money, you know, they, this will continue. So we got to go to spiritual aspect. If money making is not going to solve the world's problem, or if everybody goes after the monetary things. So that's the main problem, in my opinion, in this whole world, that we are becoming too used to Western civilizations, which is main thing is materialism. We are not bothered about Indian civilization, which our forefathers told us. Be spiritual. That, that's what they say. Spiritual means you develop the divine qualities that we have in the Bhagavad Gita, 26 of them, chapter 13 or 14. You, that, that means love and compassion for everybody. Selflessness. But honesty, sir. Honesty. What? Honesty, honesty. Honesty, yeah. All, all those qualities are there. So. You, you read that thing in the Bhagavad Gita, you will find what are the divine qualities. And divine, unless you develop that, this war will continue, everything will continue, and this profit making will continue. It's not going to be stopped actually. So the civilization has to change its directions. If I may say so, they should go to the same directions as our own forefathers, ancient forefathers told about. So if we don't do that thing, Materialism will not going to solve the problem. You are, you are, you are. We, yeah. So that brings me to the idea of Shumpeter. So uh, as an aside. Kalki. 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 কালকেই আমি আমার ছেলের সঙ্গে গল্প করছিলাম সো যে এই সত্যযুগ no, Thank you very much. Interest from the public, so you know, but we got to end it here because I think it's getting late for everybody. But uh, it was a good talk. I think it at least you know triggered some thoughts. Thank you.